Que passa? Zoom call as we intro to a new year. We're gonna, there's 
more information in your bulletin, but anyone ages four to grade five is invited to join us for our uh, Zoom Sunday School on Sunday afternoons at uh, 2, 2 p.m. And we'll be doing that with our congregation and uh, also some of the kids from the Ethiopian congregations uh, that we have had Sunday School with in the past. They're not even uh, meeting yet in person, but uh, they'll be happy to have have the opportunity to do some Zoom Sunday School. Uh, so Sunday School, it's like everything else, it's going to be look a little different this year, but we're still going to have it, and if you're interested, um, let us know, we'll uh, be reaching out as well. Also, we're, our sermon theme for today is Prophet and Lost, we're talking about value, and Jesus talked about what our life is worth, and we think about um, what that means, and how uh, we ought to value and be valued. Uh, next week, we're coming, there's going to be a new a sermon series that it's called Putting It All Together, and we're talking about the different parts of our faith or the different parts of our body, like our head, our heart, our hands, our feet. Um, and so that'll be starting next week, a sermon series on um, putting it all together. And how does our faith reach into our fingernails? Maybe not quite that specific. Talking about trying to talk about putting our faith into action and how it affects the different parts of, of our uh, life and our body. So I think that covers our announcements for this morning. Uh, oh, one other note: we're virtually we're uh, we're doing Facebook Live at both services, and now we're transitioning to something slightly different. We're doing uh, this. Later on, a higher quality YouTube, but YouTube will no longer be live. Um, we will have a service on YouTube posted later in the day. You can get a higher quality that way, and there also will be a sermon only post on YouTube. But we'll still have both services Facebook Live, a slight adjustment uh, in, our, uh, in our virtual uh, service. So we'll begin our service now with the ringing of the bell and the Opening.
last announcement that we will be having a meeting today. If you'd like that have to be, and we'll be doing it similar to the way we've done the last couple of weeks, where we'll send out three uh, three plates, and then we will put the communion cup and wafer on there. And then uh, when those are all there, uh, you can come up uh, after the cups have been placed. The next group of three uh, can come up for we begin with our confession and absolution of the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your eternal but I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy and innocent of your Son, and the death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to you, and merciful to you. Upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office, is a call to ordain servant of the Word. Announce the grace of God on all. And in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. Delight yourself in the Lord. <laughs> Commit your way to the Lord. <laughs> he will bring forth your righteousness as the light. And Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. <laughs> take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and delight in my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of the revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me. You had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore thus says the Lord, If you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious, and not what is worthless, you shall be as my God. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you. To save you, deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to lesson is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Now do one another and show an honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who curse you. Be blessed and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the Lord. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable and insightful. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. The love and never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. By doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil. Good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told the disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul, his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will pay each according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, though there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of Isaiah. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven. Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of 
Uh, and in my mind, they were a, not only a collection, they were an investment. I mean, it would have probably been better if I had cheered for a team a little better than I could Maybe it would have paid off a little better. But um, the rookie card of Gary Clark for uh, baseball over the, I think I had over a have 100 Cal Whipkin Jr. cards in my mind. They were one day going to be worth thousands. I even eventually, uh, or even occasionally, bought a Beckett magazine. Now, you probably don't know what that is, but it was a monthly magazine that told you how much your cards were worth. Most cards were worth one to five cents, now they're probably point five cents. Um, while those that were stars were maybe more like 50 cents or a dollar, or at least that's what Beckett told you to make you feel better. However, uh, uh, the sad financial reality for me is I have a lot of cards, and my cards are currently worth next to nothing, and they're extremely hard to liquidate. Uh, that could be a similar story for many kids in life, but they're fun, so it's okay, right? Now, our gospel lesson today is all about value, what things matter, and Jesus talks about profits and loss. The value of following Jesus is certainly much more enduring than any sort of collection you might have had as kids, and frankly, much more enduring than any collection we might have as adults. The salvation of God's people was of inestimable value. However, there are costs, costs up front. In fact, that's what Jesus is highlighting in the beginning of our lesson. Jesus begins to set his face towards Jerusalem he foretell what this cost will be. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things, and from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Peter balks at this price tag, though. No, no. Well, we can't afford that. Can't you sell for the cheaper version? Look, it's almost as good as the name brand. A little generic feel good religion, if we just find you, just maybe a dash of pious talk, talk uh, sprinkled in with some power, eh, you can barely tell a difference. Peter, to be clear, Peter is following Jesus, but he's not following Jesus. Yet you get my drift. Peter doesn't get, he doesn't follow with Jesus that, his, that the plan of salvation has to come about in a particular way. Salvation has to come in this way, through the cross. Or sinful humanity won't be redeemed, and human beings won't want to choose reconciliation with God apart from this heartbreaking and heart-changing event of Christ crucified for sinners, yet resurrected for our salvation. Now, to be clear, Peter loves Jesus. Just last week, we were hearing about how Peter called Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. But... He makes a mistake when he thinks that he can negotiate with Jesus about this in particular. Now, Peter perhaps considers himself a bit of a counselor. I mean, he talks enough, but he must think his words have value, right? Maybe he thinks he's providing some balance, some real world for Jesus. However, this is one of those cases where Jesus simply knows better. Now, Jesus is our leader and our Lord, and, and in some ways, it's certainly not in every way, in some ways, it's kind of similar to being a coach. And I, I'm coaching my, I coach my kids' soccer teams, and I coach high schools and basketball, and a lot of things are the same, some are different. I, I enjoy coaching. I like the camaraderie, and I like kids getting better and learning different things, and I just like sports, playing all sports. And I... I like to hear from players. I like to think I'm not just a meaty coach, but a coach that listens. Uh, we had that the players to get the real scoop. But sometimes, no matter what kind of coach you are, a coach has to correct a player. <laughs> and no matter what kind of coach you are, sometimes players don't want that correction. Or they choose to ignore advice they don't want to hear, or they tone you out. However, there comes a time when you want to get better, and you just have to listen to the coach. Now, no coach is perfectly is perfect, but coaches typically do bring something to the table. 
They have some big picture perspective, and they know a little bit something of how the game is supposed to be played. And here, Jesus coaches Peter. First, he coaches them more harshly, and then he explains it a little more gently. Peter is told in no uncertain terms to sit back and get back on the bench. Peter does not understand the big picture. The cross is happening. And, and the sooner Peter gets used to it, the better. Jesus knows what God's plan of salvation is. And Peter's suggestion is not only out of loving, it's actually the exact opposite of God's plan. But it's not just about Peter. We need to listen to our coach as well. We need to listen to Jesus. We all tend to assume we know what's best. We may value pleasure over pain. But at times, we're encouraged to endure pain as Christians and persecution, not avoid suffering at all costs. Some of the things we value very highly, we're told to stop entirely. Don't lust. Don't get drunk. Don't gossip. Well, yeah, that's good advice, but no. Jesus cuts us off. Those are one of those these cases where Jesus says that we are one. Get behind me. Don't argue with me about this. You just need to listen probably throw in some repentance. In, in case the disciples don't get it, the Father will repeat this, the very next story, in, recorded in Matthew. This is my beloved Son. Listen to it. But Jesus also, he actually explains it in the starkest terms, he also breaks it down a little more gently, in ways we can understand. Because Jesus is, after all, not just in it for himself, but as the cross proves, he, he's looking out for our interests. He cares about our world. Jesus wants us to realize, he wants you to realize what's at stake here. What are we talking about? We're not just talking about some possession or a little bit of money. We're talking about your soul. We're talking about your very life. And that's why this is, when it comes to our life, it's not a marketplace where prices can be we're talking about something far too valuable to play around. Jesus is reminding us today, don't be casual with your life. It's the most valuable thing you've got. So don't be casual with your life. Casual sex, casual drug use, these are, you know, probably the most obvious dangerous risks. But it's also be uh, it's also dangerous to be casual with our faith. We're overly casual with our time. Ah, who cares what I do today? Who, who cares what spiritual leader I listen to? Who cares what I believe? Or how I treat those I disagree with? It doesn't matter. Now, if someone gave you a priceless diamond, would you just leave it out in the open, unattended? If you had an expensive new pair of of clothes that you love, or, or a new smartphone, would you throw it around like it was a football? Obviously not. It's something valuable, and you treat it as if it was valuable. Well, remember that your soul is valuable. Your time, your conversations, the direction your life is headed, those things matter. Who you listen to, what you do with your life, they matter, and they matter. Because you matter. You matter to God. Your life is not value, is not uh, unvaluable or cheap or disposable. So, so don't sell out or sell. Rather live and give thanks for the life that God values. Now I'm I'm not advocating a sort of bland, what I call pop culture, sort of love on yourself and glorify yourself. However, the scriptures certainly say that we are important and valuable. And, and what's better is for us is we don't even have to rely on just our feelings for our self-worth. No matter how you may feel, no matter what you have accomplished or where you have failed, you are valuable 
in the sight of God. And we know this quite clearly because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You could say, and maybe all of us, we do say at times, I'm not very valuable. I'm not important. But you know who would argue with you? Jesus. Jesus says, wait a second. Well, why did I do all that cross stuff if you're no good? Even if you may sometimes doubt it, or if you think you're not worth it, you can know that I think you're worth it. I didn't do that for nothing. No way. Trust me. You're worth it. That's why you can trust me. Because I proved in the cross that you're worth it to me. Would the, would the Holy Spirit uh, choose to dwell in a trash can? Not in your life. But it is in your life. First Corinthians, uh, you are holy, set apart for God's holy purposes. That's why Paul says, don't you know that the Spirit of God lives in you? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Would God the Father orchestrate all this plan of salvation if he thought that we were second rate? The Father's attitude about you wasn't take it or leave it, but rather, I'll take you and I'll never leave you. What I'm trying to say, and what God's already said, your life is valuable. You matter. You count. So don't give up on even when you feel depressed or tired or sad, don't give in to those lies the devil or even your own self saying, I'm worthless. What good am I? Because God's already given you an answer to that question. In fact, what's more, we can see quite clearly that you are God's craftsmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Let me and Paul remind you again. Is in you. You are valuable. The Spirit of God dwells in you. So don't throw your life away. Don't be casual with your life and then rejoice. And know that you are worth much to your Lord. Don't sell out to the devil. Don't give yourself over to sin. Yes, Jesus knows that you are imperfect, but he loves you. And he, he values you. So take up your cross and follow him. Because he took up a physical cross for you. And what value is that a man gains the world but loses his soul? Your life is far too valuable to trade it for anything other than life in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. We continue by collecting our offering uh, or and have some music. Put your offering in the offering box, or you can do that later, or you can do so. Later. <laughs>
Please rise for the offer. It is truly being 
right in Zion, sorry that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon the cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and glorify and magnify your glorious name. Evermore praising you and saying. <laughs>
blood pressure, chairman constantly and I mean this if you buy one blood load of state of Jesus Christ, right there for you to be steadfast and watch your faith in the life of your life. This said wrong with you.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs>